can hear us. You. Oh, like you're muted in Zoom. <laughs> happens to the best of us good evening everybody everybody hey. <laughs> it's monday right it's monday i mean <laughs> <laughs> what oh is your mic still muted in xsplit uh -oh. oh no! I, th I think we're. Oh no! All right. Can y'all hear all of us? I think so. We'll take a moment and figure things out. Yeah. Simple. Windows did the thing it always does. No, uh -oh. Windows. Why? Windows said hey. that my headset was mic and headset, mic and yep. audio. It, it does that with uh, my Yeti too. It'll switch it to why the. Why does it do that? Head, I don't. Why? Why? Speaker. Why? Why no, it's for? it's new headset. So Windows like, I detected a new device. Clearly, you want to use it for microphone and headset. All of it. Well, everything. Nah. Thank you, Windows. Not really. Thanks. We're good. We're so good. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to switch this headset to your, to your graphics card. We're going to use it for everything. You, you <laughs> joke. You joke. When I plugged in the PS5 yeah. controller to charge... That was a problem the day that nobody could hear hear y'all on stream. Oh, really? it was using my my head that controller as a speaker. Oh, oh my, my god, god. <laughs> Windows! <laughs> and I'm just like, really bizarre. That is truly bizarre. Would you like to use this headset for your toaster? Oh my no. gosh, basically. Yeah, Hi. We're, not, we're not here to complain <laughs> about Windows. <laughs> yes, this is the no. Windows cast. I mean, some people might pay good money for that. So <laughs> the um, rivals windows. That's a bonus. That's a bonus content. We'll do that another time. Yes. Um, <laughs> but speaking of, um, before we get too deep in the weeds and introduce ourselves to you, uh, tonight's chat is sponsored by Blue Microphones, who also sponsors our show every week. Um, as you can see, the Brian is showing off his lovely Yeti X with the with the beanie that is keeping it warm in these Arctic temperatures, knitted by our friend the Proud Owl. Mics get cold, yo. They do. <laughs> they do. They do. I mean, I these were ice cold out of the box, and it was a mistake to put them on as oh, soon as no. I grabbed them. Oh, no. Oh, wow. <laughs> They're metal. It was a bad idea. Um, so now that you know at least what we're doing tonight in theory and who has sponsored us, uh, everybody go around and uh, introduce yourselves. I'll go first. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Latia Jaquise, as is as is written uh, down there below me. Um, you know me as the current GM of Rivals of Waterdeep. Uh, when I'm not GMing, I am Dahani, your accidental murder bird monk who likes to paint. Um, when I'm not doing Rivals, I'm the community relations coordinator for Monty Cook Games, a TTRPG company. I'm also a writer. I have written for d, d Beyond and Into the Motherlands and other people. And I'm here today to talk to you about the Avengers Initiative. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, oh. oh. No, I'm oh. Okay, I can have it. <laughs> I mean, does, hold on. Does the, Avengers, <laughs> does the event, Avengers Initiative come with like dental and vision? Well, it definitely comes with vision. It, it definitely comes with vision. <laughs> It's like you planned it. It's like you planned it. I didn't. I absolutely did not. I didn't even think about it. If if only they had an Avenger called Dental, then then it, then the cycle would be complete. <laughs> It'd be complete. I want. <laughs> I just said, here's the door. I mean, maybe Doctor Strange <laughs> is like it's Doctor Strange DDS. You don't know. That's true. It's would you like, trust you him know. with your teeth, though? Uh, no. Not knowing what I know, but. Uh, <laughs> before we just just derail ourselves even more sharif who are you what do you do why are you here uh hey everybody i am sharif um i play shaka on rivals of Waterdeep, um and i am here to talk about uh black history month uh and diversity and rpgs so excited to talk about it with some of my favorite people that i rock with every sunday so let's chat Yes, uh, Latia, or I'm sorry, Brian, goodness. Oh, 
No worries. I was like, we can let Latia go again. I mean, like, like let's, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Brian or Bohemian. Um, new to the cast of Rivals and loving it. Uh, you otherwise see me on Twitch and the internet as Urban Bohemian. Um, and yeah, kind of kind of happy to talk about really just everything with these folks. Um, I enjoy hanging out with them on Sunday, and it's nice to have an extra day. Yeah, and um, I'm Tanya. I Some days I don't know what I'm doing, but on Rivals, at least I play Salisa Storio. You're now a paladin slash blood hunter who has picked up our newest rivals, Virgil and Kent. And uh, let's see what ha- I'm excited to see what happens Sunday uh, with yeah. Candlekeep. And if Shaka is still like poking and prodding Salise. Thrilled. We'll see. We will see. True. I mean, there's only so much you can do on a on a road trip to, <laughs> to a place. <gasps> oh my god, it's a road trip. It's a road trip episode. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. There's gonna be games. games. There's gonna be songs. We're gonna be like playing like what's the slug bug version? What's like the what's like the that version of slug bug? I don't know. I guess depending on the type of carriage or like is is how many people are walking versus how many people are riding mm-hmm. horses versus I don't know. We don't know. we just played like that's my car. So I guess we could play like that's my <laughs> carriage every time the carriage goes past. Wow. We played wow. the alphabet game on my on my <laughs> alphabet game Seattle, is pretty good. Which, alphabet which, game yeah, pretty yeah, that's good. pretty good. Yeah, which was <laughs> Which was cool up until you get to Q and there are no La Quinta Inns just to, to stay <laughs> that's at. Around. That's, that's like your only hope. That's your only hope if you pass one of those. I, I see you. you gas. Or like a Qdoba or something. I see I see you, Henio, getting excited about possible singing. I did subtly yeah. say that I, I I feel like it's I'm I'm gonna try to rope somehow, somehow uh Eugenio into into a musical moment in a future episode. Oh, you should do it. You should do, I'd be it. Totally do down. it. Do it. Do it. It'd be great. Um, all right. So before we get entirely too silly and get to a point where we can't, we shouldn't take a break because we've talked too long. Um, you know, 2020 was a lot. It was, it was more than any of us wanted in a, in many bad ways and in some good ways. And, uh, you know, because everything's had to go remote and other reasons, You know, that's part of why we're doing this chat instead of like hanging out in person. What have been some things that you've seen or read about Black History Month, especially this year, both good and bad? Because this is not going to be a woo rainbows and and unicorns chat. We're going to talk about some real shit. Just y'all know. So buckle up. If you think that's what you were coming for, I hate to tell you, you were mistaken. Because we four black people had to live in America in the last five years. We about to we going to get real later. So, uh, so yeah, what, like what was different or what's been different about Black History Month this year? Well, um, I think one thing that I've noticed that's been a little different, and I think that this is probably, um, in like a kind of reckoning after very public things like, uh, the George Floyd situation and that kind of stuff is companies I feel like have been a little more upfront with their initiatives. Um, I feel like in the, in a previous years, they would mention it, but it wouldn't be kind of like a prime time thing. It would be like, it will post about it at, you know, one in the morning or like, it'll be like a side, you know, like a, it never felt like it was like the main thing. And I feel like uh, one positive though, it, it comes with a negative as well, but like one positive, is that I, I I feel like they have been companies have been dedicating some uh, you know some some of their real estate their social time and stuff um, to to uh, to Black History Month you know whether that is giving money or um, shouting out some people that work there um, or like uh, sh- or like you know or like a shouting out other companies and stuff I feel like that's been a good thing to me to uh, see that it's it's a, it's a small step but it's a step. Yeah, it feels odd to say that, and, you know, it, it based on, like, the horrible events of last summer, like, the reason that a lot of people in this space, in the streaming space, and other spaces are even known is that it almost feels like when companies, and we all saw, we all saw the, like, black background and white text messages coming out from companies, 
it's almost like they that was that was their run up to realize oh this is happening now we better be on it come february so it definitely feels like they are they are more active but they're more active in ways that don't feel like pandering it it like it feels to me like they're slightly i'll say slightly less pandering this year for february than they have been Yeah. Um, to kind of not take it, not take it down a, a notch, but on the on the one hand, we do have all of this positive, um, like this this positive, less pandering attention that we have seen when it comes to uh, promoting Black people and things like that in Black History Month. But also, we have seen kind of like the negative side effects, like companies who are not adequately prepared for. <clears throat> the other responses that will come from, you know, devoting what some people see as too much screen time to Black History Month. And then, you know, we get a lot of just very negative attention on, you know, the the things that we are trying to, that we are trying to celebrate. Yeah, it's just been different because it feels like there's a lot of emphasis on uplifting black creators and not a lot of emphasis on showing what we do and continuing the conversation post February 28th, because so many of these things that I've seen is, is just people doing the usual. I can't find black people who play D and D. And would you please give me a list, even though you don't actually follow any of the people you just tagged, to help you mm -hmm. find black folks who play D and D, even though there are four of us here, there are people in chat and it's not like we're hiding. There's a lot of performative, but I have BLM in my, my Twitter profile. Oh, well, that means nothing anymore. <laughs> Look, I told you I'm, I'm always the grumpy bastard just so you all know. Um, and there's a lot of, but what can I do to uplift you? I'm, and I know we're sponsored by blue, but they didn't tell us we had to watch our language. Fuck uplifting people. Put, get, pay us. Pay us for this labor you want, the emotional labor you want, the, the pat on the head and the tell me I'm not a bad white person. My time is yeah. money. All of us cost money and time and effort. And we can't spend that emotional energy on y'all, especially not in the year of 4 Andraste 2021. <laughs> <laughs> I get uplifted by cash. Absolutely. I got exactly. bills. Carthage Bruja, yes. I love seeing all the spotlights. I love seeing, uh, you know, I love when they say, oh, okay, hey, here's our ambassador. Here's who we're spotlighting or here's who we're highlighting this month. But I'm like, I also want to see come the last few days of February, I want to see some, I want to see some of those people announcing a partnership, announcing a gig, announcing a job, announcing a paycheck. I want to know their invoices went out and have actually been paid. Oh, that's a good one. Wow. Ooh, yes. That's a good one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I actually replied this. Um, so uh, pa um, Paris Lilly from uh, Gamer Tag Radio, he sent out a, a tweet saying like, um, you know, like, uh, like it's the middle of uh, Black uh, Hi History Month. Um, I feel like I c can be more involved and like, well, what can companies do? And my reply was, you know, I love that companies are showing like highlighting people that they have on staff, like, hey, like, you know, um, let's introduce uh, th this up person. And I especially love it when those people are like, you know, managers and above, right? So that they have some influence, um, preferably like C-level people and like that kind of stuff. But what, but to like a Brian's point, I never see like, how are you addressing systemic bias all year, right? So are you saying, hey, we are, looking at our hiring practice and we're going to start focusing on these institutions as well. Or like uh, we're going to get out of the, um, I forgot the name of the term where you hire people that look like you. There's a uh, nepotism. Uh, it's not nepotism. It's like a cronyism. That's more a family thing. Um, I, I forgot the, 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 the I forgot racism. Yeah. No, no, I, <laughs> no. I I forgot the the uh, name, but no, it um, pattern matching. Yeah. So like, um, 
if I'm like, you know, a white guy in that, like I grew up in this uh, area and I'm looking for like other people, I'm just naturally going to look for people that have my experiences. Right. So like, you know, what I'm not seeing from these uh, companies are initiatives and things that, that will last all years that sorry, all year that will take money and time and resources and that will work to diversify your uh, space. That to me is a real, real commitment to the ideals of Black History Month. It, it's not only about uplifting what you already have. It's like saying, how are we going to change to get better? Well, and, and the other part too is that everybody says uplift Black people and they do like these, these fucking Twitter threads that are like 80 people deep without any reason why you should follow these folks, who they are, what they do. And then our mentions are ruined the rest of the day with the, oh my God, you shouldn't have included me. I'm so, so deeply honored to be with all these legends. And I know I sound terrible and I'm, I'm channeling that bronze girl, but she and I have talked about this a lot where it's just like, all my mentions are like, oh my God. And, and I, I can't believe you would include me and think of me in the same level as all of these people. I don't know who the fuck you are at the end of the day. And nobody told me who you are, what content you make, what you do. Are you published? Like, what do you do? And it's always the same 50 people in the same every, thread day. Every week. Go ahead, Brian. It's, it's just, yeah. Like the, <clears throat> you know, I have seen a few people who this month have been, you know, they have been doing the the fall of Friday, which I mean, I've been on Twitter since Twitter was a thing. And it is a, it was a very classic thing. Fall of Friday was you said who and why. And it sort of just turned into here's a bunch of ad handles who are all now getting pinged and don't know why. And they're getting, and there's one person who pings a bunch of people on a regular basis and never says why. I have seen people this month and not just this month, but throughout late 2020 and 2021, they actually just pick one person and they say, I like the content they do. I like, like that is great. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I do. I, I'm the same. I get, I get sick of the, you should go follow these people with no real reason why. And there are people who are doing very disparate things and like, they're not even doing the same thing in the same spaces. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a little bit too much and ridiculous. Not to mention when they aren't actually curating their giant lists and yeah. you get people like a really wonderful people on the same list as really shitty people. And yeah. like, you wonder, like, I know for a fact that the person you have tagged three people below me does not believe in what I believe in or support anybody else on this list. So can you curate better or can you actually work through this and see who you are actually recommending? Because like, not only are you recommending somebody who is not good for the community, you are exposing people in the community to mm. somebody who is not good for them and, you know, putting a, a big old beacon on somebody who's just trying to start a small stream and this person is like, oh, virtue signaling. Oh, Black Lives Matter. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, my God. And it's like, I can't. Yeah, I, I think it comes from this mentality that followers are the only currency that matters. So people are like, well, mm. if I just throw as many ads out there, you'll get followers and that's good. And sure, it's a good thing to get like followers, but I feel like it's missing like uh, like uh, every, everybody said that focus in and why, right? Why do you want me to follow this, this person? What are they doing that's like awesome, right? Um, because I feel like otherwise it feels performative to me. Honestly, it feels like people go to some website that says, here's some ads. They just copy and paste it without even knowing who the people are just to feel like, hey, I, I shared out some, some of the black people, you know, and I don't know. And I don't know if people are doing that, but to be honest, I would I don't, I have my doubts if people that share these lists of um, ads, even if they follow the uh, people, do they really like know what they're doing and really like say, I am putting my name on this recommendation because I know this person is good and they do this, this, and this, or is it just like, well, I mean, they ain't white. So I'm just going to put them on this list. I mean, I, I mean, I, I like honestly want some people that do that to, to just, I don't know. I'm, I'm so curious about how they, how these lists are uh, 
put 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 together because I don't care how well intentioned they are, like they come across badly. I yeah, I the, all the people who who I've seen mass tag and include me in that, I've never seen them like retweet or reply to anything else I have ever said. The ridiculous stuff or the not so ridiculous stuff. I'm like, I only show up because you tag me for your follow Friday once a week or for your once a month, like here are people in this space, but you don't interact with or engage with any of us. Yeah. A prime example of this just happened recently. And Brian's probably going to laugh. because he, know, he knows exactly what I'm going to talk about. Um, there was someone who tagged like me, B Dave, uh, motherlands, Alicia, <laughs> who's in the chat oh. and a bunch of other folks was like, Oh my God, where are black creators that play D and D they didn't follow Motherlands. Oh, they didn't follow Rivals. They didn't follow me. I, they didn't follow a bunch of people that they that they tagged to do emotional labor for them. When in the space of writing this tweet, you could have Googled. I I mean, when this panel is over, go Google black people who play D&D. Black actual play D&D. And then today, a video came out. It was an attempt. An attempt was made. I'm gonna go find that tweet. Hold on a moment. <laughs> oh, I don't. I don't. I actually don't know what this is. Oh, I, do. I, I was do. so. I was so deeply offended. I soft blocked on principle because they started on this tangent about the Black Panther and then started talking about displacer beasts, and I was like, what? And then they tagged a bunch of people that they also don't follow or just want clout from. And it was like the worst thing ever. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hold on. I, it's, I, the video and the tweet was a whole lot. So yeah, it's, it's a YouTube video that is ostensibly, I mean, honestly, reading it is just, um, mm reading it is just they were inspired by they were inspired by chadwick bozeman to talk about the displacer beast because it is in their words the fey the most fey black panther <laughs> and i believe and and um tanya and i talked about this earlier in the last perhaps two to five minutes of the video they shouted out a bunch of creators they put them in the description and they, they, the tweet that I linked is when they called them out all on the tweet. And I'm like, um, oh, I, Jesus. I, and what's worse is like in my mentions, of course, in my mentions, uh, my social media memories is like me taking selfies outside, waiting to get into black Panther, like on this day, like years ago. And I'm just like, but the, 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 the audacity, honestly, no, the caucasity. Oh yes. I'm sorry. The caucasity. Of oh, this crap. <laughs> I'm sorry. We are, we are I no good. On, I need that on a shirt. I need that on the shirt. The cocca- the unmitigated caucasity. Um, I think you need that on a fan, Brian. That's what we need. Yes, you, need, you do. You need that on a fan. Um, <laughs> you need a gif of it. We could Photoshop it on a fan. Yeah. Or I, I, I when is your fans. birthday? We can make it a birthday gift. A personalized metal Oh, the caucasity fan. I'm just going to get, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a green, I'm going to get like a chroma key fan and do a gif and then y'all can just have fun with it. But oh, sweet. it's just, it was one of those examples of, we did content that actually had nothing to do. I mean, it was barely black history, black brilliance, black uplifting tangential related content in the first place. And then we're going to, I'm not going to say clout chasing, but it feels like you're clout chasing because you're tagging all these people who weren't even yes. mentioned in the video outside of like, hey, go follow these people. Like, why was the video just not about them? Why didn't you just have them on? Why, like, why? And I'm, I'll, I'll say this right now. If you are somebody who wants to do something uplifting Black creators, hand the keys over to those creators. Don't host the show with them on. Simply say, you know what? I'm going to give y'all two, three, whatever hours on my channel. I'm a, like, that's what I'm going to do. Don't have them on centering yourself. Just say, you know what? Here you go. Let me just give you my stream key. Why don't y'all go do a like two hour panel show on my channel. Done. That's all you have to do. It was, it was just, but it was like, it just felt like the encapsulation of the, 
what can I do to help? I want to uplift you. And I'm like, could you just leave me alone for the month of February? <laughs> like displacer Let beasts are my favorite, but I don't want to have a video done about them in relation to me as a black person. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, but, but, but like, I feel like people are like, I've heard the thing both explicitly and implicitly like, well, you should be grateful that we're covering anything basically, you know, like, uh, like almost like not giving us the like space to complain um, or to, or to give like instructive kind of criticism because it's like, well, like we're making an effort, like we're covering it and then you don't like it. So maybe we don't cover it almost like a threat, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I'm like, yo, you, there is a bar, like you gotta be better. Like you can't throw out anything. Like uh. there, you know what I mean? Like, a, like there is a level that you should hit with everything that you do. Like not only this, you know what I mean? Don't throw bullshit out there and just be like, well, I did it. You know what I mean? Like, that's not a good way to handle things. And it's especially offensive when it's our identity that you're doing it with. We are not a costume. No. That so same energy as people who say that the hate and vitriol that we get for doing things in the space is warranted because you are a public figure in the space. This sort of this sort of behavior is expected. You just have to brush it off. Like, no, it shouldn't be a thing. I shouldn't have to I shouldn't have to expect people throwing all kinds of hate speech and uh nonsense in my chats and my mentions just because I'm a black person during Black History Month. Right. Well, and the other part of that is a lot of people feel like, well, it's public, therefore I can say whatever I want because you too have put this on the internet. And I'm like, no, it's not. This is this is not a democracy at all. Nope. Um, and and so I and also this isn't the smoothest segue. We've talked about a lot of like what we feel like has been going on this year, especially like year 1.5 of, of COVID. But a lot of us also didn't hear about Black History Month growing up or it was the messaging was different. And, you know, for me, I was like, oh, we get the shortest month of the year. Thanks. <laughs> so we, we couldn't get April. We couldn't get a month with 31 days, something. And also black folks are tropical. I want to be outside enjoying Black History Month. How dare you? Like, how dare <laughs> they? Honestly. <laughs> Uh, we want to be freezing, <laughs> think, think, thinking about our uh, culture. <laughs> nah, well, my my culture, water, water my culture covers. is now my culture is from Louisiana. I wouldn't be down there with some etouffee and some uh, some Ooh, rum. Yeah. That's where I oh, want to be. Please, That's yes. Oh my god. Yeah, now we're talking. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, but, I've never been to New Orleans. I need to go. Yeah, Close but you know, country. since we're all of various age ranges. What was black? What was celebrating Black History Month like when you were younger, be it kid, teenager, young adult, in the workplace? Oh, the workplace mm. was not. Well, um, no. when I was so, I'll talk about being a kid. When I was younger, now no, I grew up in a all black and Latino city where my school was all black and Latino kids, and most of our teachers were black. You know what I mean? Wow. And we still only talk, talked about black history in February. <laughs> like I found that really, really, um, you know, um, bad. Uh, and I thought, I didn't know that that was weird until I got older. And, and like, uh, and like uh, I kind of thought, thought back about it, but yeah, that was just weird that it was like, man, even, you know, but like, that was like a relic of that time. It was like, like the late eighties and the nine in the early nineties. And I feel like it just wasn't, um, you know, uh, it, it wasn't done correctly in, in like my antidotal experience. Right. Um, so I feel like now there is more of a recognition, like, you know, this is American history. So it's not just this kind of silo thing, but I remember being really, uh, you know, I, I was like, man, why was I learning about this stuff all year? You know, it was, it was it was like almost like I was going like it's, it seems like it's 
how would have been if I went to like an all white school or something? It was just, it was just really weird. I um, so I grew up in a, I, I went to a very small um like Christian private school, which was run. It it, it was it was um off of an African Methodist Episcopal church. So the pastors and preachers and teachers and stuff were all black. I, I, I was fortunate enough to have all black teachers growing up primarily. Um, so we did the whole black history month, like every day we would learn about a new uh, black person and what they invented or their contributions to American history and stuff like that. Um, and we sort of got the benefit of that kind of education year round, just because that was the kind of so that was the kind of people that my principals were. But moving on into high school, where again, I, I did go to a primarily black high school, but it was public and not as I think we may have had like an assembly or something, but nothing that I can remember being especially like prescient year round or anything. Like we still did the whole Black History Month celebrations in in uh in February and then moving into the workforce, I worked at a bookstore. So we got the Black History Month displays, you know, here's the books by African-American authors in like every section of the bookstore, um, but nothing, nothing more than that. Uh, I don't know. No, for, yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, no, you, first. no you first. Oh, we're so polite. Um, no, yeah, public school uh, in the South in Georgia, uh, grade grade and high school, like elementary and high school. You know, it was pretty much it was pretty much like all white. Like at one point, my brother and I were the only two black kids in either the elementary and high school, and yeah, it was it was like treated with the same. You know, in history class, we talked about it. It was the same faces every year. Like it was always the same and it was the most, it was like the most prominent facts. Um, you know, it was in Atlanta. So we would talk about Martin Luther King, but it wasn't, you weren't really learning anything. And there certainly wasn't an emphasis about how black or sorry, back then it would be Afro American history was American history. There was not the emphasis um, at that point. So yeah, it, it kind of felt like it was repeated stuff every year. Um, but in terms of the, like the black families, you know, we were in Jack and Jill. It was like a social organization. We would have, we would have like events and things. So we learned stuff more at home than at school. But yeah, like growing up, like black, black history month was, it was definitely like the teachers would get clearly all got the same syllabus each year. They got their one pagers to print out and post around the class and then sometimes there'd be like, so it's Black History Month. And then you have that feeling of every single face in the entire classroom turning to look at you. And you're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I grew up in Chicago, for those that don't know. And I went to an all-Black grade school. We, we may have had like one white kid the whole time I was there. Uh, we had maybe two white kids in high school. And uh, we still did the shortest month of the year. We still did the someone gets up and recites, I have a dream. And we always learned about Rosa Parks. And I'm like, there has to be more than three black people that did some shit. Come on now. Um, so it just was sad when, uh, in, at least in grade school and high school. In college, I just got used to people doing Black History Month as like, Let's have food and talk about black history. And I'm like, if y'all bring some watermelon out, I'm going to get fired because it's going to be a fight. Look, but go ahead. <laughs> no, that's the thing is, that's interesting. In any in any workplace that had a any workplace I was in that had a like cafeteria that like had like a like a staffed cafeteria, then yes, anytime there was a history or heritage month. Then, then yeah, the menu would have like a one day meal well, and it. it was, I mean, it wasn't it like the food was good. And usually the reason is because a lot, a lot of the staffing companies basically have black people working for them in the kitchen. So it was good. 
and it wasn't uh it wasn't stereotypical but yeah it was like that one day where you're like black history month and this is the meal and uh and you have your white coworkers who are just like oh my this is so oh this is so interesting this is so tasty it's so delicious and i'm just like this is so ethnic <laughs> oh god yes. savory savory are yes. you okay, Brian? Yes. This is seasonings. <laughs> that is seasonings. <laughs> I think I broke Brian. Yeah. 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 I'm, I remember hearing that a lot. If uh, you've ever gone to the uh, African American History Museum in DC, um, in their cafeteria, they have like different, different regions of uh, the uh, diaspora and the food. So like they have like a, you know, like a Southern black area and the food is great. Um but I definitely heard some comments from uh, some of the non-black folks there. They were talking about the food and it sounded exactly like you were saying. And I was, I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before, before they, um, before they finished um, the national museum of African American history and culture, I got to say the whole thing. Cause I'll regret it. Um, they had that in the, um, like they had the menu over in the American history museum. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, I was there on a day when tourists, they had different stations, so you could have missed it completely if you wanted to. But yeah, I was also there when tourists were like, oh, oh, okay, what is this? And, you know, you're black and you're giving the chef behind the counter the nod like, yeah, no, this is legit. Like, this is tight. And, <laughs> um, but yeah, if, if, you have, if you have not been uh, to the, muse- the museum in D.C., the food is so on point. <laughs> it, is, it makes the experience. It really does. Mm-hmm. Mm, I'm because I don't know if any of you actually know this that are on the show, but I used to be a Chicago public school lunch lady. Mm-hmm. And uh, Black History Month was always interesting, put it that way. They're like, oh, we can have greens. And I'm like, you know, everybody, black folks don't eat everybody's greens or coleslaw <laughs> or mac and cheese or red beans and rice. Y'all want to have all these foods. And there's like eight black people in this whole school. <laughs> and look, the other black chick that was there that was my complexion asked what I was mixed with. So she didn't even count for me. I'm like, you go somewhere because you're the same oh. color I am. You you yellow like me. Um, And it was always just a thing of like, let's celebrate black history. And it'd be like the one one meal a week where they try to have like fried chicken and collard greens. And I'm like, Y'all a bunch of white folks. And don't look at me because my grandmother never let me have that recipe. So y'all out of luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see you, Brian. I see I'm just you. I'm just saying, like, no, I, I'm just saying. I think the best my favorite was like the key and peel sketch where the two men are uh they're both playing people at like a soul food restaurant and they oh, trying right. out, yeah. they're trying to out soul food each other. <laughs> and they're like, you know, bring me like, bring me like a severed foot and serve it on a kitchen door. And, oh, so and the witch is like, you want me to bring you a foot? And he's like, yeah. And she's like, you want greens with that foot, hon? <laughs> <laughs> if you have not seen that skit, it is fantastic. How oh, God. Is. If we wouldn't get DMC, I'd say play it now. Oh, um, yes. It is so um, good. But mm. but yeah, that is that is another part of like it's a part of and I will say this is definitely like a nineties, a nineties into two thousands thing of them trying to realize that they can do more than just put some printouts out. They can just put the slideshow on the TVs. They're like, oh, we can put food in the cafeteria, you know, and and you know, food is culture. And I mean, I, I work for, um, I work for government contractors. So we, we celebrate all the history and heritage months. So every single month or half month, depending, cause some of them are weird. Like they start in the middle of the month and they go to the middle of the next month. I don't really know who decided that, but there will always be one day where they're celebrating the heritage of, of that with a special day in the cafeteria meal. Some days they, some days they knock it out of the park. Other days it's just like, you know, you shouldn't, you know, no, you shouldn't have bothered. You should have gotten some food trucks in or something. Yeah. Mm. Mm. No, I'm just thinking of all the nasty ass potlucks I've been to where people tried, they tried their best. And then they bring something and you're like, you have pets, don't you? Oh no. Yes. I mean, who, who among us has not seen the video of like the one, I think it was a small dog or a cat 
that walked through the food and she cooked it anyway. Yeah, it was, it was a cat yeah, or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or the, the 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 pictures of the of the of the the people the 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 white people who are who are about to cook and their cat gets into like the mixing bowl and they're like, oh, it's so cute. Yeah. Yeah, we had yeah. At one yes, point, the paw print and the pie. Yeah, we had a we had a pet hair on a dish <laughs> incident at work, and at that point, potlucks were forever then canceled. It was like, no, we are, we're catering or nothing. <laughs> mm, I paw print is cute in snow, not in a pie. <laughs> Never. <laughs> no reason. Um, I'm trying to think of like, you know, we, we very loosely had topics because, you know, you get four black folks mm-hmm. together. We just start talking. <laughs> right. I mean... Mm-hmm. But, you know, we, we probably should talk a little bit about, you know, what it's like to be black in the space, the both the good, bad, and ugly. Because, I mean, we are here on our channel, Rivals of Waterdeep. And uh, we've all seen, we've seen some shit in the RPG community, shall we say. Um, So uh, I'm, I'm going to be that person. I'm just going to start with the bad. And then we can transition to the good before we take a, a short break. And probably get some libations. Because I think by that point, I may need some whiskey. Um, yeah. There's already some in this, so, you know. Look, there, this tea may or may not be enhanced. Um, <laughs> but, you know, let's talk about, well, one, the fact that people act like we are hiding under rocks that were so difficult to find. And that these same people that will get on Twitter and list us and, you know, and people know my personal gripe with this of, I want critical role, but black. And then they list Mm -hmm. us and plot hunters and dicey Amazons and maybe one or two other shows. And it's like, you know, that there's more than four shows of black people on it, right? That you just may or may not have heard of. And, but these people, where are they on Sunday? Where are they when we share stuff? Where are they now? The same people that want to uplift us. Where I don't see any of their names in chat because you know we can see the viewer list, right? Mm-hmm. So we know whether or not you're actually here. After you did the, let us uplift our black friends in D&D. We hear where y'all at. I saw a lot of retweets. I saw a lot of favorites. I saw a lot of quote tweets of the tweets. Mm. But um, mm. I hate to say the viewer numbers are not matching up. I mean, you can say it. I'll say it. And yeah. y'all can say I said it on Twitter. Like, you got an hour to redeem yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I have no more give a fuck. I just hope um, you all know yeah. that. No, but D- Tanya, that's like the number one thing I always notice is the people who, you know, and it's like some people I'm happy for the boost. I mean, you're always happy for some boost and engagement. But the fact is, it's when people want to, it's when people want to wax philosoph- philosophically or poetic about I just respect these people and I think they're doing great things in the space. And it's so great to see a show doing this. And you're just like, Oh, Craig, the great. I'll see you in chat on their next episode. Right. Right. Crickets. Crickets. Cricket, cricket. <laughs> Crickets. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I get that. Like you can't watch everything. Right. I don't watch all the shows that I'm in- interested in. So I'm not like, you got to be there all the time, but you, the reason why, you know, as we talked about earlier, those tag lists are annoying because at least for me personally, I feel like people are not engaged enough with that community to make that recommendation, right? You should be engaged with that community already. So when Black History Month comes up, then you're like, oh man, I've been part of this dope community. Um, I've been in like Urban Bohemian streams and like he's been doing all this uh, cool like stuff. So I want to recommend them to y'all, you know? Like, it should be like that, you know what I mean? Where, like, you have brought up some sort of thing, and you don't even have to be, you could be in there lurking. Like, you don't have to be, like, top fan of the thing or, like, you know, recognize on stream or, like, whatever. You can just lurk, you know? Um, And and that's, I don't think that's a tall order, you know, (laughs) to ask to diversify your media so that when these highlights come up, you can give honest kind of recommendations, you know? Um, I mean, that, you know, that's really what it comes down to, like, for me is, 
um, establish those relationships um, for, you know, a period of time first, um, you know, and, and then the like honest stuff will like follow. Yeah. And, it, and it's, you know, it's one of those things where a lot of us are doing dope content, you know, Sharif is now on, on a kids on bike show. You know, Latia has been doing a lot of cool stuff outside of rivals. Brian does stuff outside of rivals. I do stuff outside of rivals. And it just feels like there's comfort in I'm going to, I'm going to hype the known quantity or, Oh, it's all melanin on that channel. I can't be here safely as a white person, which is silly. But I feel like when people see black and brown faces, they pigeonhole it with, oh, they telling a black story. I can't be here. We we doing the same shit in Faerun y'all doing. Oh, my gosh. This, it reminds me of when you were doing the Just Chatting stream prior to Into the Motherlands um, mm. even airing. And Yo. A lot, I mean, a lot of people in chat were actually excited and had questions and they were good questions. And sadly, some of them couldn't be answered yet. But one person said, I'm white. Is it okay when this becomes a system if I play it? And I was, and, and I know it was you and me and Gabe, and we're all like, uh, huh? You heard the record scratch. <laughs> like, <laughs> you might be wondering, how did we get here? Like, um, what? <laughs> and I just had such a moment. And the thing is, it, it was, I don't know if the person's here right now, and if they are. You said what you said out in public in front of God and everybody. But it was like, it's usually someone who knows better. Like, just because that's like me saying, that's like me saying, I can't give a book written by N.K. Jemison or or Mickey Kendall or, you know, Roxanne Gay to a white friend because a black person wrote it. It's a book. It's a story. Does that mean that anything I do, you're just going to wave off as a black thing mm. and never engage because you feel like you can't relate? We've all had to do that for the last X number of years in gaming and in culture and everything else. Yep. Yeah, it would mean rivals can't play D&D, right? Because uh, wasn't, uh, by, it wasn't you know, created by us. It wasn't created by a mean, black person for I mean I've people. legit heard that before so mm. I mean like I've definitely heard this game's not for you this mm. was decades ago not you know it's like decade like this is like Tom Hanks in that sad ass D&D movie decades ago like that um, <laughs> we, we don't we do not acknowledge that movie in this house and uh, while you all are talking <laughs> I'm gonna actually find a really great tweet from uh, Alicia Marie who's in the chat but, but yeah, yeah 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 i think um to like tanya's point of saying that like critical role, role but black thing i almost think that the underlying assumption is if you are white you watch critical role if you are not white you watch this show so it's it's almost like uh it's like people view media that is from uh, you know uh like marginalized folks as like um like it's segregation like you can like 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 it's a or b either you're watching the main show or you're watching the alternate show you know and that's so annoying um and like i don't think a lot of people understand that when they give those recommendations like hey like do you want to watch the black critical role or do you want to watch like you know like the black this or the black that like you know or or like the uh, female version of this or the queer version of this it's it's like almost i guess it's just, it's just like yo like um you know like rock with these shows on their own merit you know i'm sorry brian cortillo's comment just about took me out <laughs> Oh, that's that is a good one. Oh <laughs> he God. says, God. he says, it's not Twitch and B E Twitch. <laughs> no, that's right. We uh, we 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 got Sita uh, up here. We got uh, I don't know who else is on B E T. All my B E T like references are like twenty years. Ago. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I feel like that's the same for everybody. <laughs> okay, but Carnage, Carnage, you say that, but no lie, I saw the thing going around Facebook. Where someone asked if there was white nationalist reggae. What? 
I am now mm. terrified. I'm terrified you even brought that concept into my head. I saw that with my own two eyes. Now look, there's plenty of black folks who do ska, Alex. Yeah. Um. Mm. Wow. Why but, y'all besmirch? I'm not here for ska slander. Yeah. No, you can't. <laughs> no, no, you can't. Ska, you can't slander. But the the, right, the idea. Of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The idea that it like, I, I don't know, like there is room for more there's like there's room for more in this space and the idea that okay well there is a popular dnd live play show so if there's another popular dnd live play show it has to be because it's people of color on it or it has to be because it's women or because it's all queer identified individuals like no like you don't you're not just watching quote unquote like the this version it's it's not like you know, it's not like you're, you know, and don't get me started on Living Single and Friends, but it's not like you watch Living Single and someone had to make the white version of Living Single so that people would watch it. Because that's what Friends was. Thank you for coming yep. to my TED Talk. Um, <laughs> well, people do that. And, you know, and also the fact that we ain't the Highlander up in here and I'm going to be that person because I'm always that person. Uh, and, you know, I know this, we've said this before, but remember, not all skin folk can folk. If you want to get on Twitter, and this is going to be terrible, and I know it's a gendered slur, but it makes me that angry. If you want to get on Twitter and say, don't mention me with that other game, and then cry like a little bitch and claim that people don't like you, then there's no wonder that people don't like you. If Like, what if we got on Twitter and said, oh, don't talk about us in Plot Hunters, don't talk about us in, in Dicey Amazons, because... We there's too many like then then if y'all notice us then or notice them then you won't notice us so you we're not the Highlander there's room for everyone right I don't know it just it doesn't make it it doesn't make sense and I don't know like I know people like like Tanya said there are people in chat who are on shows I I watch other shows that actually have I mean I will admit if I go and see a new thing announced and I go and I look at the cast and creators and producers and I see a bunch of what appear to be cisgender white guys I'm very much less interested just because it's like okay this has been seen this is already, we have mm-hmm. seen this already. Um, mm-hmm. And it also makes me ask, like, you don't know anyone else? You don't know anyone else you could ask and hopefully offer to pay, but anyone else you could ask to be in this? Um, and this seems okay with you? And and yes, it, it, and, and you will sit there and you, you, know, like you will die on the hill of defending how okay it is. And it's like, yeah, it's okay. It's just nobody wants to watch it. It's perfectly fine. You can do whatever you want. Nobody wants to watch it, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you, Rebel Girl. I appreciate that. Well, you know, but it's also the fact of like, you know, we're not all at the same time. And, you know, like if we're off a week. We can go boost like, oh, Dicey Amazon's on. Y'all should go over there. Or, you know, Shreve's show is about to be on. Or Latia's about to do, you know, something cool. Uh-huh. You know, tomorrow Brian is going to be on Roll20. So there's stuff that you can boost. And there's stuff that I boost. It's not my bag. I'm not going to watch it. But my friend's doing a cool thing. Or Yeah, I mean, like. I get excited when I see other folks winning, you know what I'm saying? Even if I don't watch their shows, I'm like, yo, if that's another show that I know was a quality and they, um, and they got like a sponsorship deal or they boost some numbers or like stuff, I'm like, yo, that's dope. Like, I don't think like, oh man, they're encroaching on my black territory. You, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not a game of risk. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I'm not trying to get all the black, all the, all the black areas, you know, in a win, you know what I mean? It, like, like seeing other people do dope stuff, it gets me excited. It makes, it makes me want to get my game up and like, and like, do like even, even doper stuff. Even if it's somebody that I would consider being like competitive with, I would still want them to do better. Cause I know it's going to make me tr- try to be better as well. You know? So it's like friendly, friendly rivalry, not yeah. like not the other Kind of oh yeah, yeah, yeah. rivalry. Yeah. 
don't know. There's a couple yeah, yeah, exactly. people where I'm like, mm, mm. I have no shame. I, <laughs> there's a couple people where I'd be like, I don't know them. Suddenly, I can't read when it comes to their tweets. <laughs> but for the most part, 99.9% of you, I like. Brian, are you, are you, you, I see that like look on your face. No, that's just me making sure that I got to shout out another show that is uh, full of black brilliance and it's D&D with the homies. Cause, oh, um, cause zombie homies. rolled in, zombie rolled in and I was like, let's just make sure that, you know, I'll talk about it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> cause guess wow. what? We, we, we will boost other people. We will talk about people right. that you should go see that aren't us. I know it's it was my it, my reflex of like no do not perceive me. Yeah, we will also <laughs> we will also crumble into dust if you if you try and compliment us. That is also like if you pre- <laughs> <laughs> but like that's part of what we do is we big each other up, we big other people up that are doing stuff. Like this is collective stuff. You know what I mean? Like I'm not trying to succeed in isolation and say like effort F for everybody else. I want to be the black person. Everybody knows, you know, uh, in this stuff. And some people do think that way, you know, which is sad, but like, there really is room for everybody. Like it really is. Yeah. It's, um, you know, while yeah. we're talking about it, Oh, I'm sorry, Latia, do you want to go? No, I was just going to like echo everybody else. And say I don't want to be the only black person anywhere ever again. <laughs> Because it's, was not, like, it's not fun. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I had a better phrase, but my words <laughs> left. Come on, it's fine. I was like, I, I was like, I don't want to cut you off, and then I'm like, where's this going? But I'm just gonna sit here. It's no, it's not going anywhere else. That was all I was gonna say, and then we we're gonna move on. That's okay, because uh, do not perceive, do not perceive. <laughs> me. You're on a live stream. It's too late. <laughs> we've seen you. Um, but you know, <laughs> Dimples brought up Vampire the Masquerade. I mean, I met B. Day Walters and Christina Ariel because of D, but now I've got to play other games with both of them. And let me tell you, if you ever get to play Vampire with B. Dave as a storyteller, take that option. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Sweet. I miss that makes me miss LARP. Like I miss Vampire the Masquerade LARP. That was so much fun. I-, I knew Dimples would get excited. I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> it was like yes you called um but it's you know it's 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 rough because even when we are all together or we all lift each other up and you always you always tell people well i don't know i've never heard of that person i it's not my fault you don't go outside or use google yes and uh vampires and vino I, I want to play in a game with you and B Dave and Erica oh, so I bad. Love, I love that username. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Uh, that is Jason uh, Carl, LA by Night, um, who is amazing. That was that was actually my first experience with Vampire the Masquerade, watching LA by Night, and yeah. that too. was like I I want to do that. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, Hey Lisa, how are you? Um, so yeah, I, is there anything else you want to touch on before we get a quick bio and uh, and uh, other break? Because I I feel like it should now be uh, vintage o'clock, shall we say? Oh, are we going to after dark mode? Oh yes, it's I mean, eight it's, o'clock. It's already like pitch black. It's been pitch black here for like hours, but whatever. Um. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're no, just gonna just... yeah. Go ahead. No, I just I just love that we actually we 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 made on our promise to like okay let's talk about the let's talk about the shit and then like let's just like take it up to that positive. I love that we did that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you know before before we go to break, you know, and and we can tweet out or if somebody wants to throw these in chat, you know, there's plot hunters, which is you know I believe they're all black women and non-binary, yeah. some queer. Um, our friends at Dicey Amazons. You know, uh, Critical Bar and Omega Jones was doing Creature Collectors. I'm not sure if that is over or coming back. Um, Abria Iyengar does everything under the sun. Our she friend. Does yeah. So does Gabe. <laughs> Gabe, you know, Gabe is actually on Cyberpunk Red with me on Thursdays. 
Um, and, you know, he's a writer on Into the Motherlands and writes. He does a whole lot between, I don't know who sleeps less, him or, or B. Day Walters. Or B. Day. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, Brian. I, I don't think B. Dave sleeps ever. I'm not sure. I don't know how. <laughs> yeah. Chaot- Gabe is chaotic energy uh, incarnate. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I keep talking about, but Shreve just started a show that's uh, Kids on Bikes. Mm. Um, there's a lot going on. And it's all black people, so y'all can't say you ain't know. Yeah, and... One thing that I've done is sometimes I will, I will go on Twitch. I will go under the DND tag or like whatever kind of system tag, and I'll look through. And if I see people of color playing a game, I'll just hop in and just watch for a little bit, you know, um, because you might find something that's super cool, you know, that like isn't being advertised, isn't on, you know, um, part of one of the official channels or like anything. There are a lot of us out there doing it, you know, and that's only the people that have it streamed you know what i'm saying like there's also people just doing it just because they love it whether home games or i guess game stores you know or can't really go to a, 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 a lot anymore but in the before times you know at at uh, gaming stores and like in like all all that stuff there is like no excuse for people not to when black history month comes as i have a list of people they've already engaged with that they can say yo these are some folks that are dope yeah, you know, Dimples no and Dice. Though. Yeah, Dimples and Dice is in the chat. Bishop Marie Body is in the chat. Um, y'all ain't got no excuse. But with that, we are going to use this excuse to take a break. So, uh, segue, I did it. You think I did this professionally. So hang out. We'll be back. I'm going to mute us and put on some music. So hang out. Uh, mute yourselves. I'm going to play music.
Hey y'all, we're back. Hopefully I remember to unmute myself. We back. Hello, yes, welcome back. Come back. Hello. Hopefully you all can hear me, because as as we started the stream out, I did not uh I did not unmute myself. Hey, we summoned Gabe. Hello. <laughs> I I appreciate anything that summons Gabe James Games to the chat. Yes. <laughs> Yes, we adore Gabe in this. We adore Gabe in this house. Uh, but yeah, for those of what did you do? Oh. No, I I have a, a, a stout. Oh, it's very large. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Yes. Um, I am I am very classy. I poured my moscato into a mason jar. Yeah. Hey, look! I live in D.C. and a cocktail bar. You could charge an extra two dollars for that. Nice. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's so good. Um, mm. But yes, we uh, we did some chatting earlier. We can keep chatting for a bit until people have questions. So the way Q and A is going to work, you can ask us questions about you know our experiences as Black folks in the RPG space in general. But note that any kind of very weird, leading, or disrespectful question, A will be ignored, and B it may get you banned. Because we are not going to play with anybody tonight, or ever, really, but especially not tonight. Um, so think about things we've talked about, experiences you may want to ask us about, but all of us reserve the right to not answer your question. Uh, but until we get some questions, what else is on your mind? Like, what? how are you feeling about the conversation so far? Because, like, normally people leave that for, like, kind of a recap, but we got an hour. Let's talk about it. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, I don't. I don't often get to talk with other Black people about being Black. Um, and personally, my experience has always been like I. I grew up very sheltered, so when I was younger, it was like people were like, "Oh, you're you're so proper. You sound so proper and articulate and educated and." Like, I just thought that that was like the neatest thing because my grandparents were teachers and they raised me and that was how it was supposed to be. So I have been very slowly kind of getting like, I'm not going to say broken of, of those opinions, but like relearning that, like, that I faced quite a lot of microaggression <laughs> growing up <laughs> is uh, something that I've, I've had to unlearn and, you know, having friends like y'all in this space where I am you know, where I prefer to be is a very good thing. So I'm very grateful for talks like this. Same. Just same. It is so nice to be able to have these these conversations with people who get it. Yeah. yeah. It's very it's very freeing to do so. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think it's very freeing. And I also like it because I have seen... The opinion that uh, <laughs> that you know mm -hmm. I like rivals or I like these other shows because they don't like you know focus on these kind of issues. So I I never want people to think that just because we're playing a game that's focusing on the game like that we don't think about this stuff and we don't talk about this stuff amongst ourselves. I don't want people to get it twisted, you, you know. So I like these kind of things because they remind myself and they remind like the viewers that hey we are like real people that live in this real real world as black folk and we deal with a whole bunch of intersections of racism and a whole bunch of like other is isms as well and we have to navigate that even if it seems like 
during our game that, you know, like we're having a great time and we're doing all that. Like we also have lives and these chats help to, I think like remind folks or to introduce folks that might not know us that well, that, you know, this is part of our life. This is other stuff that we think about. Yeah. And just because we don't get a chance to insert that stuff in a fantasy game, but if that shows they're not paying attention because we've done that, especially yep. with Shaka's character as a tiefling and we know how tieflings are treated in D and D like we literally joked about Shaka being profiled because he was a tiefling, except that wasn't actually a joke. We we don't Not really a joke. We don't ignore these things. We're just very. We've had to navigate the planes of this for so long. We do this without having to really think about it, and it's there if you know how to look. Yeah. So, yeah, y'all just aren't uh, paying attention. That think that we're not being very blatant in what we do in this world uh, but we have questions um uh we can start from the t uh the first one we had yes um so the question for everyone and like it can be everyone it can be a few of us what's the best experience um what's the best experience you've had in the ttrpg space Ooh, there's a lot um, I'd say this show, um, because it was one of the times in which I got to be my whole self. We don't have to code switch. I ain't gotta, I ain't gotta pretend to be somebody else I don't have to deal with. Oh, you're a black person. So you gotta be a drow. We ain't gotta deal with that bullshit. Mm. And, uh, you know, also going to D and D live when we premiered and getting to meet other black people face to face that I'd only seen on the internet and was like, Oh God, you're real. I know they're real, but you know, it was that <laughs> kind of like other black people that play D and D. Oh my God, you're here. Um, and then, uh, you know, the D and D stuff I'm going to do for Astro and, you know, creating motherlands never in a million years. Did I think I'd be able to make a game, you know, fucking amazing game let me just say yeah um for me it is i mean honestly it is this show like it is it is an on, honest to goodness lead up to be being on this show like meeting you and carlos and serena at game Con that one year and then getting to go to D, D live the next year which the ttrpg community helped me do like on a whim, I was like, what if I went to D&D Live for my birthday? And the community was like, here you go. And I was like, why are you doing this? <laughs> um, but yeah, getting to um, getting to see you all in your space and then like being asked to, to be a guest and then being asked to be a cast member, probably the best thing so far. Yeah, I, I would definitely say like, you know, this show for sure. But as far as a specific moment of this show, um, I would say coming back for our first episode of season two for me, it really sticks out in my mind because we had, you know, I was kind of nervous about kind of going in and I had finished one complete season of D&D &D and I felt like so much more like confident about what I could bring to the table. Um, I felt that like, connection and trust with like everybody else because you know if if like a people don't like no i didn't know carlos and serena um like before like rivals like i didn't know them at all right and i feel like i had made these new friends like you know so it was just it was beyond the game you know so i remember coming back and just feeling like i was like coming back home you know what i'm saying so like the studio and just launching that off that was like a really special moment for me and like it really like made me say this is some dope stuff that I'm glad I'm a part of because it's affecting me not only because I'm doing this stream paid opportunity, but because I'm meeting new friends like in my thirties, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, um, so like, yeah, I always, I always think about that. Um, for me, I mean, I will also add like being, being, being invited to be part of the show. Absolutely. And also realizing that the types of tables that caused me to leave, like, 
to leave this hobby were not the end all be all of tabletop. You know, I couldn't, I, I could go to tables and they were all about the story, not the dice rolls. And people were more about creating, you know, like when I was in LARP or, you know, being able to express that part of myself, that's much more about storytelling and improv than just dice rolls. So, and I love the fact that being on Rivals, it's like getting to craft a story every week with these people, even when the DM throws twists and turns at you that, you know, this, 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 it's good. It's good stuff. But yeah, just being able to being able to be at a table and have fun and knowing that my friend who I'm not going to embarrass too much trusted me enough to get back into this hobby decades after I had said, nah, not for me. <laughs> I think we're just basking. Yeah, I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> just, just yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let, let's uh, let, let's let's go to question two. Uh, um, okay, I know one problem in this space is that people often want uh, you to give your skills for free or nearly free. Have you figured out ways to get people to respect and pay the true value of your work? I mean, I could answer, but it's also going to be the most acerbic answer. Any? You I might. Look. I. I I probably just have a nicer version of her answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to hear both. I want to. Right. I want to hear the, the uh, good cop, bad cop uh, of answers. It's not even good cop, bad cop. It's bad cop, less bad cop. <laughs> and Brian and I have known each other so long. It's like he probably knows what I'm going to say. It's like I just learn pe- tell people, hey, no, and then if some offers, I just laugh and then share it with my friends and go, do you see this bullshit? Did you actually see that in front of God and everybody, they asked me to do all of this work for this amount of money? But for me, it's just like you, people, anyone who's run a D&D game or any RPG game, whether it's streamed, whether it's with your buddies at home, it is work. And because none of us should be working for free. And also I've had other people tell me they want you to do how many episodes of a thing for how much money? No, no. No, that's that's not acceptable because the time that you're on screen, that you're preparing, that you're doing whatever is taken away from the other work that you normally do. This is why you charge X, Y and Z. And I just learned to tell people you want me to be on a 10 week show that's a three hour session. This is what it's going to cost you. And if they come back with, well, we can't do that. I'm like, well, then you won't have me on your show because also, a lot of people are West Coast and don't seem to realize time zones exist. I I love my West Coast friends, but when you want to start at 7 West Coast time, that is that is starting at 9 p.m. for me, 10 p.m. for Brian. So <laughs> time zones exist. But I just am very firm. And then I go fuss at people who don't charge for their time. And I know Zombie is still here. And I'm going to embarrass her right now because she was doing... A lot of work for a whole lot of nothing. And uh, she was chatting with Nega Oryx <laughs> yesterday. Talking about, oh, well, I thought that was a lot of money. And I was like, I'm going to yell at you. I've had to, like, text people going, what did you say? You took how much money? Um, And just kind of turning into the, the auntie. But I've also just told people no. And then some people have just laughed in their face. I'm like, you need to go get the fuck on. Yeah, that, but nicer. <laughs> I, I didn't cuss too much. Come Honestly, on, give just, us your part. Just no. Like, first off, the number one thing is saying no. Uh, I know somebody somebody posted a thing on, tw- on Twitter that was a nice way of saying, like, I am not available for unpaid opportunities at this time. And then if you just take off the at this time, then it's like, I am not available for unpaid opportunities, period. And it's it's just the thing it's like especially if you're somebody in this space if you're somebody who is a content creator on any platform twitch youtube etc every moment you're not on camera you are working and if you have a day job added to that you don't have time to take unpaid anything so so yeah um you know if somebody says hey we'd love you to hop in for an hour one shot for charity sure but if someone's like, yeah, we want you to do, you know, we're doing like, 
yeah, five episodes, three hours in the evening. I'm like, nah, I like there's um, everyone knows here. I love quoting my ad fab, but there is like there is a line from one of the characters who's like, I don't even get out. I don't even get out of bed and piss for that kind of money. Like, make sure you're paying people what they're worth, period. And uh, if you if you can't realize they're going to say no. And if they say no, don't try to go on Twitter saying I was just trying to I was just trying to because then you will get roasted. Yeah, um, we have a fun question because I'm also trying to be mindful of time because, again, it is uh, a cold, dreary day. And uh, while some people had the day off, not everybody did. This is a fun question. Uh, what is your most self-indulgent, self-insert character you've ever created? And can we know more about them? Hmm. Yes, go, Brian. You're nodding. Yeah. Um, so for the Vampire the Masquerade LARP that it was in the early 90s, uh, mostly mostly college, um, they asked, they, they essentially went to people who were in theater and asked, hey, you're all interested because we'd really love a little bit of extra oomph in our live action role play game. And I created this character that was ridiculous to play and I did costume changes throughout the night. He was essentially, <laughs> he was essentially um, a Malkavian whose, whose sire had trained him to masquerade as a Toreador. Oh. And I ended up essentially leading the Toreador clan while playing this Malkavian. So I, I essentially said everybody like, here is how you tell the difference between these two characters. That was the most indulgent I have ever played. I had so much fun. It was redonkulous. And, um, and that was a nice because the group didn't have a whole lot of out of character drama. There was only a tiny bit of metagaming, but we had several, several um, storytellers around to go to throughout the night. So it was great. <laughs> oh my God. I want to play vampire with you now. <laughs> so uh vampires and vino i think it needs to be me you brian erica ishii and get dimples and dice who also plays vampire yeah. and have the most ridiculous game ever <laughs> you have made a note excellent you can dm <laughs> me anytime or hit me up on facebook yeah um that's, well, that, st that's that that storyteller gave right there let me make a note <laughs> yeah i, I yep. shall make a note yep um, I think my longest running character for D&D &D was probably my most self-indulgent -indul and y'all are going to laugh at me and I'm sure, I'm sure Alex will laugh. I, I'm a big Dragon Age nerd and so I basically filed the numbers off Fenris and made him a rogue but played him in this literal like real time of playing was like three years until he died. He oh. got eaten by a dragon. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, what was his? His name was Velozzo. And he had like the memory issues and all these things. And part of his quest was trying to figure out like what really happened to him, who he was. Because, you know, like canonically Fenris doesn't remember his life. And uh, it was a really bad role on trying to like kind of get out of some ropes that the dragon was like. I was tied to a stake and the dragon was coming and I just botched the role and didn't get out of it. And it was just like, chomp. <gasps> Three years. Well, Three years. He was gone. He was gone. I, I wanted to do the twin brother thing, but it just didn't work out. I like that. Um, yeah, I, I just want to add to the uh, free or nearly free thing. I know it's hard to tell people no, especially when you are like, you don't feel like you're a big enough name or like whatever. Like I know we kind of get taught to scrap for everything you can get. And, you know, like you should be doing stuff for free early to get to like, get your name out and stuff. And I just think that that advice is kind of outdated. Like, I think even if you are getting reimbursed, like l lower than you think you can officially make, like you should be getting something. You know, and and like that's just my opinion. Like people might differ on the panel, but like I think that I would rather take like a little bit of something than than like do something free because at least there's that like appreciation to you are giving me your resources. 
you know, like you're giving me like your time, um, you know, um, and, and like of that. Um, I think once you feel like you are, you know, got a few things under your belt, then yeah, like have the choice to say no, because as like a Brian said, I'll do charity things for free all the time, you know, because it's raising money. It's for a great cause, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, but I've had people ask me to do like rival style campaigns, you know, like for nothing. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Mm. Like that's a lot of time. That is a lot of time. And if you had like respect for, I guess me as a person, not just, what I can give to whatever you're planning, it should be a no brainer. Like you shouldn't ask if you can't pay for someone. Like you wouldn't ask like a plumber, like, yo, like you come do and just like, you know, plumb. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, can you just plumb, you know, like for free, you know? Um, hey, electrician, can you come over and electric everything? Like for free? No. You know, um, look, y'all told me to get alcohol. Okay. This is, this is, no. this, is, this, is your, this is, this is your fault. You know, um, <laughs> you, you, you know what I'm saying? Like there, there are things in society that I feel like we have said, we pay for these things and we don't pay for these things. And unfortunately a lot more of the creative stuff and the, and the art stuff tends to go on it. We'll just do it because you love it. You're passionate. About it. It's like, not. Nah, it should be both. You know what I'm saying? People should be able to make money off their craft. Mm. Uh, can we get one more self-indulgent character before we move on to another question? Sure. I'm, I've been trying to decide which one because they all are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, it would probably be um, the very first very first street like streamed campaign I ever did we pre-recorded and put the episodes out on YouTube I'm not telling you where they are because I don't want to um <laughs> but the character that I created she was a tiefling college of swords bard named Lotus who fought using fans like katana style because mm -hmm. I mean if you know anything about me I'm real big into like object manipulation I spin hula hoop I do poi yes those kind of fans <laughs> uh, I spin hula hoop, I do poi, I spin fans, I do all of that. So putting that love of my hobbies into that character was purely self-indulgent because, you know, fans aren't even a weapon in fifth edition. So we had to like homebrew the fans and and then it, it turned out like one of the characters tried to do something really nice by getting her fans built, but then like he stole the the blueprints and then the guy he took them to like we're like oh my gosh these were such good blueprints I'm gonna turn them into weapons and then she like her, she got her ideas stolen and it just like killed the whole thing but she was my most self-indulgent character but really all of my characters are self-indulgent because they all do things that I want to do mm -hmm. I mean that's the fun though I mean I can't go be a paladin IRL so sadly right um, I just saw Brian cackling when we mentioned fans as weapons. <laughs> yeah, Latia, La I, have, I have to send you a note later. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, we, we are up to shenaniganry. Um, any of the questions we have remaining, are there any that are jumping out for you all? Um, Sorry, let me uh, roll back up. We're just being silly now. I'm sorry. This the self indulgent. That was the that was the best question ever. Like it was. That's so awesome. And no one has ever asked us that because they usually want to know what is it like being brown in this space. And we're like, you know what it's like. I said it in the chat, like, and I've said it before on Twitter. Don't invite me on your panel in February to talk about what it's like to be black. Invite me in your panel, and don't invite me in your panel in June to talk about what it's like being queer because. Y'all better buckle up. I'm gonna have a whole lot of shit to say. <laughs> invite me, invite me in like March to talk about my favorite comic books. Or yeah. my, like, yeah. invite, like, like, come on, y'all. If you acknowledge that what we do is important and you acknowledge that we don't have to prove ourselves as nerds or role players or gamers or anything, 
don't make us the black person on your panel. Mm. Like invite us to talk about stuff that we love period. Anytime. Yeah. Anyone invite me, say, invite me to talk about how to homebrew hoy and rope darts in your D and D 5 campaigns. We love that. I will do that. But this is all part of what we said, that engagement, like that year long, that engagement beyond the month. So that when you get to the month, you have stuff like, yo, like, you know, uh, like not just trying to fit everything into, you know, into the shortest month of the year. <laughs> yeah. And some of these are questions that would take a lot more time than we have left. So if we don't get to your question, it's not because we're like, F that question. Is that it would be a long answer, even if just one of us took it. Um, what about the question about the uh, character or campaign setting we'd like to play in the future? So like any, and like, I guess I will also include like systems. Like, is there any mm. systems or settings or stuff that maybe you saw somebody else play or something that you want to check out? Um, I will take this one uh, first. I would love to play a cipher system campaign with y'all or with literally anybody. I'm going to let y'all in on a secret. When I started work for Monty Cook Games, and they know this, when I started work for Monty Cook Games, I had never played a Cypher System game. I had never played any of their systems. Um, they uh, introduced me to them very quickly, but I love them. Mm -hmm. And so I would actually love to take y'all through uh, a Cypher System campaign. Mm -hmm. mm, I have played one. I had to pick D&D, &D, though. You, you, you have? Yeah, I was a guest on a on a stream game for uh, the folks at One Shot. I was a an, an evil clock. Ooh, the woman with no <laughs> eyes. Oh God, what? Now I gotta mm. remember it. It was like something about a woman with oh. like no oh. eyes. Or I'm something. a little scared of that. <laughs> oh, I hammed it up entirely. <laughs> well, I'm interested. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I'll find it. If. If I could learn the system better um, after playing the Star Trek game with you all, yeah, I and this is not manifesting. This is not speaking it into the universe. But I would love to. I would love to GM a Star Trek game. <gasps> it would be very difficult for me to not be that aggressive, aggressive GM, like like playing a, because don't no no eyes in chat. No oh my god in chat. Don't you dare. Don't you don't remind me I said this later. I'm drinking a martini. How dare you? But someone clipped that. It would be it would be a lot of fun to do. Um it would be a lot of fun to do because my favorite thing about the game that we played together was how it went to left field. It, it took a left turn immediately. And I'm over here like, oh, we're playing Star Trek, we're playing Star Trek. And y'all are like, no, actually, we're just gonna be shenanigans. And I'm like, God dang it. <laughs> That's true. I mean, Latia was like wiggling. Uh, people are uh, like, people are like, is Brian a playing a Vulcan? Happening. And I'm like, no, I'm just playing a Starfleet <laughs> officer. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very fun game. It was. I would. I would like to play that again. I would like to play it once I feel like I know what the rules are. Yeah. The, sy the system really threw me, and I. That is my one. My one big weakness about a lot of new systems is it. I need. I need time to actually assimilate those systems. I'm so used to D&D &D and D20 based systems that it's hard for me to be like, okay, wait, I don't know how this one works, but it was, it was still fun. We had a great time. We told a, we told an amazing story. <laughs> yeah. Um, one that I've seen, actually, I actually haven't seen this played, but I've read about it. Um, Mouse guard. Um, I played it. Oh yeah. That yeah was... It seems really, seems really interesting. Oh my God. Gosh, that was one of the first um, one shots that mm -hmm. I did with uh, with with Tanya and uh, Critical Bard and the Opera Geek and Misty. Oh my we'll gosh, see. that was amazing! Yeah, I I like want to play like one of these animal themed ones because like there's there's like a bunch of them, yeah. right? But 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 like that's the one that I've heard about like the most. Um, so like yeah, I I want to jump into like one of these uh, one of these animal themed ones like Mouse Guard. Yeah, or Humblewood. I had Humblewood too, so. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's like the bird. That one's like birds, right? Or I like how birds like, that one's and birds. by the way. <laughs> there we go. I mean, if you mention There it Humblewood, is. By yeah. the way. 
if you're interested in seeing a humble world campaign, no, I'm not going to do a, I'm not going to do a promo. That's for later. Um, <laughs> but if humble, Rise, will be my, Rise. humble Rise. will be my first like campaign setting because I didn't realize that it was just a, a layer and supplement to D and I thought it was its own oh, game. Okay. And I'm okay. like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Sweet. I want to, I want to do more Dragon Age. I want to be in a game I'm not DMing. Um, and I'd like to run the Witcher RPG. I've got the books. But if the combat is anything like cyberpunk, um, then I don't know. I would have to really learn the combat rules because the combat is very crunchy. Mm. Okay. One hour of our two hour show was all combat last time. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like a straight up war game kind of. Well, it was like, you take damage, and I'm like, okay, I know I got a number. How hurt am I? Oh, I've got a punctured lung. Am I dead? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> They're yeah, like, you're was... not dead. And I'm like, how am I not dead? I have 30 hit points, and I have a punctured lung. How am I not dead? I was very concerned for you, yes. <laughs> I was concerned for me, too. And then my internet went out. Mm. So I'm like, so I was like, am because I dead? Because of your punctured lung. Because of your lung. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was... Your lung was hooked up to the router. So. <laughs> I mean, well, that cy- cyberpunk would do that. Yes. <laughs> I mean, can I at least have better knees if I gotta be tied to shit? Cyberpunctured lung. You got the oh cyberpunctured lung. That's right. Red. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um, and then Monster mm. of the Week and Blaze in the Dark. I want to play those as well. I have Blades in the Dark. I don't have the other one. I got Monster of the Week for Christmas last year. So uh, I, I have a I have a bunch of friends who I do like a, a secret a secret like board game TTRPG Santa with, and so I asked for Monster of the Week last year and I got it. It was great. I got kids on bikes too, but we'd already played that. I've got it digitally. I don't think we ever got a physical copy. Yes, we did not. Yeah. Um, well, it's quarter till. Do we want to get in one more question, or do we want to kind of like, like give words of advice, or both? I think we can take another question. Uh, yeah, we got a few. Uh, if anybody wants to grab one. Um, uh, I have picked yeah. questions already. So. Yeah, we we already talked about things. They kind of get right. Uh, well, let's do another kind of self-indulgent question. Like the pick your favorite TTRPG character that you've played. What would be their libation slash drink of choice? Let's let's be completely self-indulgent because no one ever asks us all these questions. That's true. You're right. That's true. Mm, let's see. My Fenris clone liked whiskey because he, I mean, I like whiskey, so he liked whiskey. And Celise... I'm trying to think of what she would. She would probably drink like elven wine and be bougie that way. The finest elven wine. <laughs> what? <laughs> the what? finest what? elven wine. Yeah, the finest finest elven well, I mean, wines. so wait, there's many kinds of elves. So are we talking wood elf, high elf, drow? Is there a are vintage? Wine made by wine? elves or wine made from elves at this point? High oh, elves. Oh, God. Bye, oh God, right? Okay, it looks soil and green over here. I just, I just feel like we're doing, we're doing like finest dwarven meats, and I'm like, wait, are the meats made from dwarves? Or <laughs> wait, so does that mean that the the fine dwarven crafts in Orzammar are are crafts I... made from dwarves? Or? Just, you know, I have to wonder. I have to wonder. <laughs> well, I regret <laughs> my choices. <laughs> All of them. Oh, oh my boy. gosh. Um. Uh, the honey, if she drank alcohol, would like something sweet. And Latia doesn't drink a lot of alcohol, so suggestions are appreciated. Moscato. Um, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like she, she would like a Moscato. Yeah, I think um, if yeah, if Tahani wanted to start drinking, based on the fact that we're in Troll Skull Manor, Virgil would be able to. To, to assuming he has access to the kitchen, make you plenty of fun, sweet things to drink. Mm. Or ciders. Yes. Uh, I do. Oh, goodness. I do love a cider. 
Mr. Dahani does love a cider. Yeah, like Shaka's like an ale, you know, ale, ale guy, pretty plain ale, I'd say. Um, I did play this one pretty indulgent character for a one shot. He was essentially like a king. He was like a he was like kind of a gluttonous king. So he was uh, always trying to get like the subjects to bring him food and drinks and like that kind of stuff. Um, but it was kind of a mystery as to what he liked to drink because he would like every time somebody would offer him a drink, he would make a big deal of it, kind of like uh, smash, you know, smash it on the ground. This isn't what I want or whatever. And it turned out that like what he liked was it was just just water. So like everybody was like trying to like bring him the fanciest drinks and you know it's really just he just wanted some water man that's all he wanted just wanted some water ice, some ice mountain Fiji Dasani nobody likes Dasani Dasani is the you wanted some uh, Dahani Dasani uh, <laughs> oh branding opportunity now Ooh. now now I don't want to say that because like Brian might think that's made of Dahani <laughs> uh, you know <laughs> or you know I don't know but yeah just some water just some nice water. No. <laughs> um, I don't. Yeah, I, <laughs> I just love it. The elven wine made of elves. I love it. I'm like, is it? No, I I haven't really decided for Virgil, but um, like Archon from the Dungeon Crossing campaign would drink anything, like anything that would like he would walk into a dive bar and be like, you know, give me your strongest, whatever, give me your favorite. He he's the kind of person who would go to the bartender and not say, give me your special, but give me your favorite. But also, like, would go into a fancy place and order something ridiculously super extra and be the one person everybody at the bar hates because the bartender has now had to go into the archives and into the basement and into the, like, attic to get all the ingredients for this, for this poor thing that this tiefling is ordering. And yet he turns and just wishes, that, like, snaps everybody the smile, like, no, nah, it's cool. It's cool. Trust me. It'll be worth it. For me. <laughs> God, now I wish, I wish you, I don't know if you had any soul in chat. Because now I wonder if your drinks complement each other. Mm. Um, I can I can talk to uh, DM Jazzy Hands at Eugenio later, and we can discuss that. Because that would be t- so twee. <laughs> I will say for a fact that DM Jazzy Hands and I have not officially decided how twee our characters are yet, but. I was thinking about this earlier and I weirdly enjoy that we decided to be, to have this dynamic going in because yeah. then it keeps people from weirdly shipping. And I'm like, be, be mindful of shipping. First off, be mindful of shipping characters played by real people because it leaks into shipping real people. So please don't do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, no RPF, no RPF. Please. No real What's people RPF? fiction. No, oh, real no. people fiction. Oh, Rude. <laughs> I love that. Real I, fiction. I, this is my new. I did not know that, and that is that's not okay. Real fiction. Yeah, it's a, it's a thing. It's oh my god, that's some nonfiction that fiction. Not okay. I don't like that. <laughs> it's a. It's. It is a real thing. It is actually a category on Ao3 that I found to my horror. I mean, if you want to real people fiction me with somebody who's one of my crushes, just send them a DM saying I want to talk to them, and we'll handle that on our own. <laughs> yeah, uh, on our own. <laughs> no need to get involved. Period. We've Should all been show. awarded one yike. Right. One, yike. one, enti- one entire yike? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yike. One whole, one whole one, yike. <laughs> one, one. Yeah. I'm yes. trying to think. Because I in the Dragon Age game I GM, <laughs> I'm playing Fenris as the Inquisitor. And canonically, he likes a red wine called the Grigio Pavali. But whenever I've written fan fiction, he's always a whiskey drinker. And is that because he likes whiskey or because you like whiskey? Um, no, I I made it so that he only likes Grigio Pavali because he was trained to do it because Fenris literally was a slave. And gotcha. it was something that oh, he I was see. he had to serve and was trained to like. But given his druthers and in his travels and in meeting Hawk, he has learned to appreciate fine spirits. And his personal favorite is whiskey from Starkhaven. Hmm. I haven't played a Dragon Age. I should do that. I, I would love to play in a Dragon Age, I think. I, I do like the game. The RPG or the video game? I love the video game. I would need to do some reading and learn about the RPG, but I just also loved watching your your RPG um, 
as much as it went up and down and off the rails and everywhere, it was still amazing. That was Gabe's fault. If Gabe's still in the chat, that was all his fault. <laughs> wow. Uh, we did talk about Gabe's lovely chaotic energy, so it's true. So uh, either for me. Yeah. I've never but, played either. Oh, we got I'm I'm about to edge you on origin. No, Gabe convinced everyone that there was like a fertility right and they all had to go naked in this in the spring or the oh well. And then everybody was naked. And then he got really drunk. And the next day he woke up, he had sketched people naked and thought that he'd slept with Bull. Which I feel like he'd remember. It sounds so much like Gabe. It's ridiculous. I mean. (laughs) I hate that you have that daddy fan more than one color. I was about to say, don't you? That's not the one that was in the GIF. I, I I have. My fans contain multitudes. Wow. That's Daddy the second that. one we've seen. Right. Oh, don't worry. Brian will make a gif of himself. <laughs> I got addicted to it. It's so easy. <laughs> I'm just going to throw money at you to make gifts of me because I don't know how to do it. Um, what are you going to teach me? Um, so before we two get, before we get too silly, I enjoy, I'm enjoying us being silly, but yeah. we did get one thing <laughs> that I think is a good note to end on before we, uh, before we, we do our outros and talk about all the cool stuff we're doing. And I think it was a question from Dasbiff about action items. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a great fan right there. It, this one was necessary. That is a great, yeah. I, I like that question. Yes, yeah, so I'm just trying to find the actual yeah. question again. Yeah, I forgot the wording, but it was something like, "What can? What's one action item for everybody in the chat?" It was something. Uh, yes. Um, oh, sorry, I've got it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got it. Good. Uh, what is an action item that you want people listening to this chat to, te- to act on? Oh, well, I mean, I don't mean once. to. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to be repetitive, but. You know, find some marginalized folks, follow them for a while, for more than five seconds, right? Uh, you don't. You can lurk. You can just share stuff, but engage with their content, and then make a recommendation about the ones that you like. I think that's what people should do, whether in Black History Month or not. Right? That's what. That's that's one. Th- that's an action item. I think everybody can do, and like you can Google like. Plenty of pokes that are of different inter- intersections that are in any fandom that you want. But like, if like, you want to keep it in like RPG, there's like plenty of lists out there. So pick a bunch of people, engage with them, and like share out. Like this person is cool because ABC. I think that would be dope. Um, engage with our content and stop doing the I would like Critical Role, but Black. I would like the Adventure Zone, but Black. And also, remember the energy that you spent on those tweets and those threads? You could have gone to Google. Hell, I'll even say go to Bing. Go somewhere <laughs> beside crawling in our mentions and asking for emotional labor when that time you spent crafting that tweet, you could have gone to Google. And when you come to our shows, because this is the thing we've dealt with since day one of Rivals, Stop acting like we've never touched a D20 before and backseating us. Some of the people who do this aren't even as old as D&D. And it's annoying when you want to backseat us. Or in the one case where someone sat in the chat, the first episode, the first episode of the season says for a DM and said, I know it'll make this show great. And named a well-known white woman DM. Oh, as if we right. weren't all just oh. sitting there. Oh, I remember I forgot that. about that. Oh. Oh. Yeah, and I did not I did not mention the person's name on Twitter because it was not their fault. And I didn't want people brigading them thinking they had sent this person. But there's the assumption that because we're brown, we clearly don't know what we're doing. We know what we're doing. Or we fake it well enough for those two hours for you not to know. <laughs> oh, that's a um, bushel of yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Here are those yikes you ordered. <laughs> <laughs> um support us without expecting anything in return 
right? Like, don't support us and say, oh, I supported you. Now it's your turn to do something for me. Don't do that. Also, I have may- I've maybe had a little too much to drink. Um, but like, if you throw your support behind us, support us because you want to, because you want to see us succeed, because you want to see us thrive, because you want to see us go on to the next big thing. But don't do it expecting us to come back and say, oh, this was so great. Thank you so much for doing this. Here's the thing that I'm going to do for you. Like, don't do that. Like, if your support comes with a caveat, I don't want it. So Mm -hmm. that is is my action item. Like, support us because you want to see us succeed and you want to see what we're going to do next. But if you have, if 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 it's conditional, then you can keep it. So you asked for an action item. Both my parents were teachers. So here's homework. And I'm going to borrow from something my friend said. Even though I am new to this cast, I want Rivals of Waterdeep to be as popular as Critical Role. We can't make that happen. But you can. You can tweet it out. You can visit. You can tell your friends you love it. You can clip it. You can talk to people. That would be amazing if these shows that are done by people that are not that are seen in the same atmosphere, hierarchy, stratosphere, whatever you want to call it, as that show, which is supremely entertaining, and I do enjoy what I've seen of it, but they're not the only show out there. There are so many people out here in this space grinding and hustling and doing the thing and doing super entertaining shows and spending their time entertaining you, sometimes for free, sometimes not. Okay. But yeah, I would love to see shows like Rivals and especially Rivals become popular at that level. So there's your homework. Yeah, I th- I think I think that's it. Cause I mean, I'll sit here and keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> so, so is there anything else you want to talk about before we uh, sadly say goodbye for this evening? But trust me, it's not like we're never going to talk about this again. No, I just um, it's not the alcohol t- talking. Oh Jesus. Christ. Is it it's though? not is no, it it's it's not the alcohol talking, but I am so appreciative of all of you. Um I don't know. I I have always felt like this awkward kid. I mean, we're all awkward kids, so there's like nothing there, but like I don't know. I'm just grateful to have you all as friends and uh castmates and players and all the sappy stuff that would come at the end of something like this. So I just wanted to be the one to start that. So I'm very Mm. grateful to have you all as friends. (laughs) No, that's absolutely real. Like, that's why I brought up that season two, episode one uh, memory of like, these are my friends, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that is the, to me, the most special thing about what Rivals has done, um, you know, for me personally is expanding my network of friends and, trusting people because you know playing a game especially dming a game you got to be super vulnerable like you have to like really put like are these people going to gaslight me like are they going to try to play against me and and and, like we've all probably been in games where that's happened right where like you have to constantly be on your toes or uh, think about stuff you know um and like things have happened and like we've had conversations about it you know like like it's not you know things are never perfect in a group but i feel like we've really made you know, like the best effort to make sure everybody's enjoying stuff, everybody's having fun, and the collective is uplifted, you know, um, in in that way. So, yeah, I mean, I, I am very appreciative of everybody, um, you know, that has been down with Rivals um, because it's been a real special thing um, that, you know, I will, I cherish, you know, like very, uh, very uh, closely. Yeah, and I'm glad it wasn't two hours of gloom and doom and it sucks to be black in the space. Because yeah. we can do that. A, we can do that at any time. A lot of times we do that at any time. And people don't listen. They just go, 
go make your own. And I'm like, you got to go make your own money. Which is always my answer. So unless you got go make your own money that can rival that of people that are established for 50 years, you can keep stepping. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm just glad we got to come and chill and hang out and have a conversation with a bunch of our friends that are watching and folks that are new to what we do in rivals. And, uh, that we get to carry this energy with us because some days being the only one is really exhausting. I actually do have one more action item uh, that I... Sharif's the one that comes in at the end of the meeting. I got one more agenda <laughs> item. I got one, <laughs> one more agenda item. Like The, me the meeting know, leader is ready to end and, and then Sharif's just like, more like, oh. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have one more. It is a puzzle. Uh, no. Oh. I'm, I'm muting order. you. <laughs> I'm okay. muting you. If you, you're, I um, will mute no. you and kick you out of this call. <laughs> no. Um, one action item that I've, I, I wish I would have mentioned like earlier is if you appreciate our work, um, support us on Patreon. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, yeah. I just put the link in the chat. Um, nice. You know, so you know, it takes a lot of resources for us to make stuff happen. Um, and if you're not currently like supporting us there, please support us there. Um, you know, and like it'll help us build bigger and better things. Um, you'll get early access to the audio episodes and like bonus content. Um, but in reality, just a uh, rock with us and like us and like you know, put your money where your uh, where your uh, you know where your mouth is when it comes to supporting us right if you have it of course you know if you don't have it i get it but if you if if you have it throw us throw us some some support there at patreon yep yeah. so i'm gonna say thanks to the microphones for sponsoring this joel thanks for hanging out in the chat i see you i appreciate you being here for this conversation yeah and uh we are gonna we're going to do some outros and then some of us will be right back on stream tomorrow. So, um, <laughs> I mean, I was just gonna, so I, I, no matter which way we go, you're second, Brian. So Sharif, why don't you go first? Yeah. So I'm Sharif. Hi. Uh, uh, as I said before, Sharifjackson.com, Sharif Jackson on social media. Um, I um, just started a kids on bikes campaign on roll 20 on Monday mornings. Um, we had our first, we had our session zero today, which was awesome. So um, it was amazing. Oh, oh, th oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's at 10 a.m. Central, which I know is early, but if you're working and stuff, you can just, you can just c catch the VOD because it'll go up on uh, roll 20s on their uh, YouTube page, but it's at twitch.tv slash roll 20 app um dope dope cast um and yeah it was a lot of fun um uh on tuesdays i do our video game stream so like tomorrow um at a 10 a.m central i'll be continuing my playthrough of spirit fairer um which uh, went pretty fun the uh, the uh, last time um and i'm kind of saving my playthroughs for the stream um because like i think it's a fun game to um you know to um play like collectively and it's super cute and there's you can hug people, you know, they're, they're just a hug command, which is great, you know. Um, Wait, yeah. in this game? Um, huh? In this game? Yeah, in the game, there's like yeah. a, there's a talk. Oh, there's, yeah, it's so good. Yeah, the, yeah, like you can just hug people and like it helps them, you know. Oh, yeah, like every everybody has like a like emotion meter kind of from like happy to sad. You just hug them. It's great. No. Um, uh, well, <laughs> Well, they they are consenting hugs. Like you're not just like bum rushing folks, you know. No, it's optional. I, mm. It's optional. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, 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 it is optional. But, so my brain just but, um, went yeah, to. It, does that mean they're gonna hug me back? <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. Uh, this, it's very <laughs> difficult to give a one sided hug. I'm just gonna say. Yeah, ex yeah, yeah. Exactly. I don't. I haven't g gotten to a case where the other person just like frozen. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know what I mean, but um, yeah, this is this is not like a con, you know, where somebody just comes up and you're just like, oh, what? <laughs> um, what? But when cons were were a thing, um, oh god, I'm rambling because I've had sounds. It sounds um, like you're okay. about something familiar. <laughs> I don't remember what that was. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. So like I check out the the, the like kids on bikes on a Monday morning. Check out the uh, gaming stream on a Tuesday morning. Um, and this Saturday I'll be playing in a, a charity game for Jasper's Game Day with a uh, basement and bugbear. So make sure to check that out um, at three thirty central. Mm-hmm. No. 2.30 central at uh, twitch.tv slash 20 sides to every story. <laughs> uh, Brian, what are you up to? Um, hey, Urban Bohemian, Brian. Um, tomorrow I will be, um, you know, as Sharif mentioned, I'll be on the Roll20 app Indie Showcase. We'll be playing Humblewood. It'll be a one shot and it'll be tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv forward slash Roll20 app. Other than that, I'll be doing my usual um, Saturday and Sunday and Tuesday, and then the occasional bonus stream. Sometimes there's food. Mm, food. <laughs> mm. My grandmother made black eyed peas and cornbread. So mm. After the stream, I will be indulging. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I guess uh, I should probably. I was like, do you're my on. Outro. I thought that was your outro. You're, you're, you're on, like, yeah, because that's that's no. <laughs> that's fire. That's a that's outro. Outro. That is fire. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> no. Um. Hi, everybody. It's me, Latia Jaquis at Latia Jaquis across all social medias, um, except for the ones where I'm not. Good luck finding me. Um. I have nothing going on this. Well, I have something on Friday that has not been announced yet. So, uh, look out for that announcement. Um, you may have already seen some character art for the thing that is happening because I retweeted it, but it hasn't been announced yet. So I don't know if I can talk about it, but it's happening. So clear your calendar on Friday. Um, other than that, you can catch me on Sundays uh, DMing Rivals of Waterdeep and um, doing stream of consciousness posts on Twitter because that is apparently the way my brain works now. My brain is Twitter. Just that's that's what's going on um other than that if you feel up to it you can also follow me uh at well follow the money cook games accounts at money cook games because it's me behind the twitter on that uh doing all those posts because i am social media and community relations um we've got some fun stuff coming up in the future and uh would love to have you all be a part of it so yay uh, yes, and CB is yelling in the chat. Talk about it. Oh, okay, cool. It'll be announced <laughs> let's get tomorrow. That, let's Fantastic. get that pre-announced. Let's get that pre-announced. Talk about it. All right, let's get that pre-announced. Hold on, let me let me get to the message so I can tell you who all is going to be in it on Friday at uh, six thirty p.m. Pacific Pacific <laughs> Standard Time. Shush, <laughs> everyone. Shush. Myself, CB, B. Dave Walters. Mm. Um, Michael Sinclair, Ooh. Michael Kritz, uh, let's see, what is his name? Uh, Captain LaGrange, Anthony LaGrange, and um, Kiss of Hemlock are doing a level 20 D&D game for charity. Oh, wow. So, uh, yes. Yes. It's uh, B. Davis, B. Davis DMing. It's going to be madness. Um, and I am so excited because I don't remember the last time I did level 20 play. And I know B. Dave is amazing at level 20 play. So I'm super excited to play in this game. Uh, Friday, 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I don't know where we are doing this. CB, put the link in chat or something because I don't know. I'm just playing. I am I have a Minotaur. Her name is Ariadne. I love mm, her. Sweet. <gasps> it's happening. Okay, I love your choices. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Deliberate. <laughs> yes. ah. I will, you know, I will. Go ahead and reshare the art of her uh, so that y'all can see it. Go to my Twitter, look at the art, be amazed. I love her. Uh, that's all I got. And oh my God, I'm buying your mouse. Sorry. Okay. Oh, that was the scroll. I was like, "What was that?" Yeah, that oh, was the, that was the scroll. I have a I have a razor mouse. I don't have that fancy Logitech <laughs> sponsorship <laughs> like everybody else does. I was like, "What the fuck was that noise?" That's okay. Yeah, I, I, will, what that was. I will just buy you a mouse. It ain't about being sponsored. Um, a pet pig in in my house. <laughs> you know what? With that, I've been Tanya. Uh, I stream occasionally on my channel. I don't know what I'm doing it again. Uh, but Thursday, 
You can catch me at 7 p.m. Central over on Sirenscape playing Cyberpunk Red with uh, Gabe James Games, uh, Kelly the Opera Geek. Oh my God, I forgot her name. Sarah. Um, Mustang, who, Mustang Art? Mustang thank Art. you. I was I was about to call a whole different name. And uh, Scruff is our DM, and then Sirenscape and um, Simon are producing it. You know, knock on wood, no tech gremlins occur this week. And uh, and then Saturday, more D&D with the homies on my channel at 2 p.m. Central. And Sunday, we're back with Rivals. And we see what has happened. It sounds like a road trip montage. It is, is in... the road trip montage. We're off on the way to Candle Keep. Yeah. I don't have any more lyrics. That's all I got. Sorry. <laughs> um, and with that, I think we're actually going to go raid uh, Jason Charles Miller, who uh, yeah. who is hosting our friend, the Opera Geek, tonight. Uh, let's make sure he's actually on. So thanks for hanging out. Uh, we're going to go raid him, see what Kelly's doing over there. Please be nice. Say hi. Um, I know she's super excited to be on the show. Thanks for hanging out again. Thanks to Blue Microphones for sponsoring us. And uh, y'all get some dinner, some food, peace, and we'll holler at you later. We love you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you for hanging out.